the Reserve Bank obviously today has tried to justify why it raised interest rates for the 12th time in just over a year. But they did that did come with a warning, more pain to come. Joining me now, and we've spoken to her on a regular basis, Rate City's Sally Tyndall. Rate Sally now at 4.1% after yesterday's increase of 0.25%. I haven't checked today. We know Westpac went up yesterday quickly. What about the other banks? What have they done? Oh, no, no word of uh, anything from uh, CBA, ANZ or NAB. They are staying quiet. They're really just take, letting Westpac take the fall for this one. We expect to hear from them probably tomorrow, maybe the next day. It isn't rocket science what they're going to say. They're going to pass it on in full. They did it the last 11 times. There's no reason they won't do it the 12th. What will be interesting is what they do for savers. I hope they step up and announce full hikes across all all of their savings accounts because that's the one small silver lining in all of this is that people with money in the bank can finally get a decent interest rate. Sally, we, you know, we, we like to, to, you know, bury it down to, to, to actual figures. So mm -hmm. a $750,000 bank loan, that's not massive in Australia these days. At the start of the hike, their repayments uh, were rising by $114. Total increase to their loan since May 2020, now $1,700. So that's after-tax money that people have to find on a relatively modest home loan. How the hell are people going to do that? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. This is not something that's a one-off trip to the dentist. It would be a very expensive trip to the dentist at that. This is every single month with no sign of relief in sight. In fact, we are staring down the barrel of potentially another hike in July and another one in August. Certainly, uh, the big four bank economists are all starting to ratchet up their cash rate forecast on the back of the governor's statement yesterday, but also his appearance today. He really, the governor that is determined to get this job done and do done in a reasonable time frame. Uh, and as a result, I do think that borrowers are in for more pain ahead. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but if we go back... Uh, 12 months to when these 12 rate rate rises started. Um, money was very cheap. Did too many people get convinced to take out loans uh, at a rate that they didn't realise was suddenly going to accelerate over the next year and they're now getting caught? Yes, they did, and that is the problem. Of course, hindsight, 2020. Uh, but, you know, like there was... A, 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 the property market was going through an almighty boom in 2021, 2022, even up to the beginning of January. And we had borrowers taking out loans at record low rates, and they were getting stress-tested up to November 2021 at 2.5% as a buffer. 2.5%. And so you've got all these people taking on debts that were six or more times their income. These are the people that are in significant hot water. Really, what APRA should have done was rein in that buffer a lot earlier. They should have increased it to three, maybe even 3.5%, three uh, well before they um, upped it in November of 2021. But again, we just didn't know what was around the corner. I don't think anyone would have believed you if you'd said the cash rate would get to 4.1% uh, by, you know, June of 2023. Sally, what are you hearing in your research about people who were on fixed loans that are now starting to come off those fixed loans, probably some of them tied to the end of this financial year. Uh, how hard is it going to be for them? And, and just finally, what would your advice be to those people? OK, so surprisingly, the people that have come off the fixed loans so far are doing OK. We haven't seen a huge tick up in things like mortgage arrears just yet. It's gone up slightly, but, you know, historically, it's pretty it's tracking pretty low, all things considered. Uh, but that doesn't mean these people coming off fixed rate mortgages aren't having incredibly tough conversations around the kitchen table about what their next steps will be. A lot of them have refinanced. We've seen refinancing go through the roof 
improve over the last 12 months has been fantastic to see because it really has forced the banks to be competitive and hand out decent rates, even though a lot of them didn't want to. Uh, but others are in mortgage prison. They're in mortgage prison because they can't refinance to a different lender because that stress test I was just talking about, the APRA stress test, is still at 3%. And so they're applying with their new lender at a rate that's significantly higher now, three percentage points higher probably, and then another three on top of that. They're getting stress tested at rates of eight, sometimes even nine percent, and they're not passing those tests, so they can't switch lenders. What APRA really should do is reduce that buffer for refinances. They're already in the system. There are already, you know, um, you know, they're already a risk in the system, but helping them refinance to a lower mortgage rate will help reduce that risk.